what's good you guys Ras Atiyad here in Singapore and I'm back at it y'all really um this is huh we're doing it we're doing this together right Singapore stands together we're trying to stay home together we're trying to stay healthy together we're trying to do it all together but in the house stay home please um for the most part I think it's been smooth sailing I know a lot of people are like trying to use TikTok and bingo challenges and whatever tag your friends get everybody involved this is becoming a pre- community project and I'm loving it I'm actually really enjoying it of course, there are those people out there saying, you know, it's not a competition. You don't have to pick up new skill sets. It's not, you know, uh, COVID-19's got talent. I, I get it. I understand. You all have your own ways of feeling about things. And the way you manage and cope is good for you. It doesn't have to be good for anybody else. And that's just the bottom line. But in the meantime, I know a lot of people are talking about their body clock is off. And right now, because you do have, you know, work from home and you're able to pick and choose what time you go to bed, you don't have to get up and go anywhere. You don't have to catch a bus. You don't have to meet anybody. You don't have to punch a clock, right? So then you're left to your own devices. This is adulting 101. So basically what I'm finding is a lot of people are complaining about their body clock is being off. And why are they upset about that? mostly because they're finding that they don't get up on time, that they feel lethargic during the day, they don't eat on time, they're not getting three square meals, they snack a lot more. A lot of things are off. But the only way to fix a body clock is to reset the body clock. Now, if you were to look at a plug-in clock, like a digital clock, or even, let's say, an analog clock that runs on batteries, right? What happens when the clock stops or when it's not showing the right time? Basically, you unplug, replug, and reset. You re program the clock to the date and the time and whatever else is going on you want 24 hour time we got 24 hour time uh change the batteries whatever you got to do but the point is you got to reset now what does that mean for us as human beings we are creatures of the day actually a lot of us are nighttime people a lot of us are daytime people but regardless the world runs on 24 hours a day and the day starting with the sunrise it's how we were originally programmed to run so if you want to reset your body clock The simplest thing to do is to wake up early, which means set an alarm. Whether you have anywhere to go or not, set an alarm. This is a means of self-love because it involves discipline. You have to say no to yourself sometimes. You have to say no to the easy things sometimes. Of course, your bed is comfortable. You don't have to get out of bed if you don't want to. But if you got out of bed because you wanted to, what if you got out of bed because it made you happy, because it reset the rest of your day and you had the energy to complete all the things you wanted to do? Let me tell you a tough lesson I have. I... I'm a night owl, hence, <clears throat> excuse me, night owl podcast, right? So I'm a night owl and I like working at night. Why? And that was something I had to really, really understand. I like working at night because at that point, the house is asleep. No one's going to interrupt me. No one's going to beg me for attention. No one's going to ask me to come watch a movie with them. No one's going to ask me for shit. Why? Because everyone is asleep, which means my night starts at about one in the morning. That's when I know for sure everybody's asleep. But that also means that if I get, you know, if I catch my second wind or whatever, and I get excited about whatever it is I'm working on, that means I could work through the night, which means what then? I go to sleep at six, seven, maybe eight o'clock in the morning, and then my whole day is shot because the rest of the world will wake up at whatever time they wake up, and by the time I wake up naturally, if I'm not woken up on purpose by some little child, um, that means I've wasted half the day. So my productivity suffered a little bit. Even though I got a lot of work done at night, I was still dragging during the day, which means I still have that same pile of work to work on that night again. So it's easy to throw it off course, but it's also easy to reset. It's kind of like the slight edge, right? It takes the same amount of energy to sleep late at night that it does to wake up early in the morning, honestly. Um, It's all about your willpower, your determination. What is important to you? Now, if you really, really feel like you could manage your entire life working upside down, as in like, you know, night shift kind of people, then great, have at it. But if you're in a situation right now, like in COVID-19, our quarantine situation demands that we all stay home, which means you might be the odd bird in that whole house full of people that like to wake up on time. So that means they're not going to let you sleep. They're going to talk crap about you and how much productivity you're getting done because they can't see the work you're putting and you're doing it while they're asleep. So in those cases, you got to work out a system. you got to manage their expectations. It's something I've always told any of the people that worked for me or worked with me as a supervisor, as a team leader, as a manager. You need to manage my expectations. I know what I expect of you. You know what I expect of you. If you can't deliver, you need to let me know why. And you need to let me know ahead of time, not after the fact. So if you're one of those people that really does work much better at nighttime, you need to find a way to have the conversation with the people in your family so they will allow you the rest that you need at the times that you need it, and so you don't fight about those things. 
Same goes for career choices or choice of educational subjects, your, your major, any of those things. You have to manage other people's expectations of you in order to lead a peaceful life. But for that to happen, you need to know what you want. So when it comes to a body clock, you need to pay attention. Naturally, if you were to wake up early, when are you most energized? A lot of people um, have said stuff like, you know, real legends are either going to bed at five o'clock or waking up at five o'clock. Why? Because it means you're giving yourself the dedication to your craft, to your passions to get the work done. Whether it's expected of you, whether you're being paid for it by another person or not, the point is you're doing this for you. In order to understand that though, you need to start setting a clock in the daytime and see how that works. A lot of people don't realize you're actually morning people, but because of old habits, maybe during college time or you know studying during PSLEs and stuff, you studied through the night because you had class in the morning. So that was the only time you had available to you. So in those cases, I need you to really check. Test yourself. I mean, you got the time right now. Why not wake up super early and see if you can get the same amount of stuff done? And yeah, it's going to be hard the first day. And yeah, that also means if you wake up early, you're going to get sleepy earlier in the day. You're probably going to be tired by about, I don't know, 10, 11, 12 o'clock. It's normal. It's okay. But you need to know how much sleep you absolutely need to be able to function well. Not function, but function well. It's like, yeah, okay, I could eat like, you know, a piece of broccoli every day and I'm sure that would give me some nutrients, but it's not going to be enough for me to be as efficient as I could be, as productive as I could be. Same thing with sleep. Sleep is a little more potent though because you can go a couple of days without food or water, you would definitely kill somebody if you go like a day or two without any sleep. But that's the point, right? The point is to be self-aware. So why not test yourself during this quarantine period and see when you naturally have highs and lows of energy. Does it naturally come for you right after food? A lot of people get very tired after they eat. Does it naturally come for you, you know, in the mid-afternoon or do you generally get sleepy in the mid-afternoon? How does it correlate to when you eat, what you eat? Have you noticed what you eat and how much energy it delivers to you? So all of those things are things that we can actually pay attention to right now because it all contributes to your body clock. I was always told that if you wake up early and eat early, it resets how often you get hungry throughout the day, which means if I eat before eight o'clock in the morning, Guaranteed by 12, I'll be hungry. Guaranteed by about 5, 6 o'clock, I'll be hungry again, which means those are my three, three meals for the day. It also means that I have the energy and I have the time to be as productive as possible. I didn't realize that as much until baby girl started going to school and I quit my job. When I quit my job, it was up to me to figure out when I was going to be uh, using or what times I was going to use as my office hours. At first, I did the 9 to 5 thing, which means that baby girl had to be in student care. So for me, that meant that I drop her off at school and I get to laze around until eight o'clock, which is my time to start working. And then I would work from eight until straight until five, six o'clock in the evening and hope that I got a lot of stuff done. It didn't work very well for me. And plus, baby girl was getting super frustrated with the fact that she had to be in daycare. She loved it, but she also hated it, which means she was finding it difficult because by the time she got out of uh, student care, It was like five, six o'clock in the evening. And that meant she only had like an hour at the playground and then she had to come home and have dinner and maybe check her homework if she hadn't done it already and then go to bed. There wasn't a lot of time to wind down from the day and that was bugging the hell out of her. So what did I do? I shifted things. If baby girl is in school for about six, seven hours a day, why can't I work for six, seven hours while she's in school and pick her up as soon as school gets up? So I changed my office hours. My office hours went from eight to six. It went from... Let's see. It went from eight until one o'clock, which means I get a half an hour to kind of wind down my stuff, stop in a good stopping place and then go pick her up as in walk to go pick her up and come back home. From then it was like two o'clock until eight o'clock was all her time, which means I'm out of business. My office is not open. I take care of her, which means we have time to go for a walk or go for a movie or play and make some arts and crafts and get all her homework done and dinner and put her to bed. And then after eight o'clock, guess what? My office opened back up again. Because I'm the CEO of my life, I'm the owner of my own business, I get to set my office hours. So at that point, it means that for people like, you know, my clients in the US, my clients in Europe, they're just then starting their day. It's upside down from us and they're able to get a hold of me and talk to me as well. Also for those people overseas that aren't able to talk to me in the mornings of their t- of their day, they able, they're able to talk to me in the evenings, which means I'm open for business from 8 o'clock onwards and they can talk to me after they get off work. So it worked really well for me, but in order for me to figure that out, I had to try a couple things. I tried the 9 to 5. It didn't work for me or for her. And for me to be happy and efficient, I need her to be happy and fulfilled for the most part. 
because if she's not, she's going to bug me, right? She's going to ask me for attention. She's going to be interrupting me in the middle of whatever it is that I'm doing. And I'm going to yell at her if I'm frustrated. I don't want any of that to happen. So what I'm doing is I'm noticing the natural patterns of her. I'm noticing my natural patterns. And it helped me to break up my day. Plus, that also means that I'm working for more than 10, 15 hours a day and I'm okay with it. It doesn't feel like work because it's something I want to do. So for those of y'all out there with body clock issues, I'm telling you, there is a way to find a healthy balance for you. What you're used to doing may not be the best for you and you won't know until you try something different. So please try test it out while you have the time. We have about six more weeks before we get out of this thing and I'm hoping it really does end at that point. But just in case, why not try and see when you're most suited to working, when your natural energy peaks and when it doesn't, when you need an afternoon snack or when you need a pick-me-up, whatever it may be, check, test, see what works for you and then adjust accordingly. Now, if you have any other questions, please drop them in the comments below. But until I catch up with you again, please know as much as I'm asking you to do stuff, I'm also trying new things. I'm also testing my limits. Right now, our energies are kind of synced up, but we still go to sleep really, really late, and it's not good for her, and it's not really productive for me either. Right now, I'm trying to share the TV in the living room because when she goes to school is when I used to actually sit down and listen to all my lectures or go back through old podcasts trying to find content that I can regurgitate. Okay? So, it's not just you I'm telling you to do work. I'm testing my theories as well. So in the meantime, if you want to get in touch with me, you know how to do so. DM me, message me, let me know what you need, and I'll see what I can do to help out. But in the meantime, you have this podcast always. I'll catch you again soon. Bye.